You want to record this voice? Yes, yes. Okay. So, inshallah, we are going to talk about today how to start a career in IT. We had another session long back about uh, all the different options in IT career. And uh, that video is already there on YouTube and anyone can go and refer. So that is the starting point for anyone to understand. If someone is trying to start a career in IT, they have to know what are the different options available in IT. So for example, I want to migrate from India to some other country. I want to know which country I have to go to. Then I have to find out how many countries are there, what are the pros and cons of each country, because anyone can go to any country, but you have to decide which country you want to go to. In the same way, <clears throat> if you want to start a career in IT, you have to first decide which career you want to take into consideration. So there are so many careers within IT. So we have another session already on YouTube. There you can find out what are the different career options available in IT. So I am not trying to go to that entire session, but I am trying to bring few points from that session into today's session. So the first slide in that another session was, what are the prerequisites for IT jobs? Because many of the people want to come to IT and they have a lot of questions, confusions, doubts, right? So the doubts are, <clears throat> do I need to have a computer science engineering degree? So many, many of the people think without a computer engineering degree, BTEC computers or BTEC IT or BTEC artificial intelligence, BTEC machine learning, they cannot do a job in IT. So that is a misconception. So that is the first point I'm trying to clarify here. <clears throat> you don't have to have a computer science degree, BCom computers or BSc computers or anything. And another problem these days in the market is a lot of educational institutions, they are coming up with so many fancy names just to attract people. I heard these days in India, the engineering colleges are offering BTEC in artificial intelligence. It is just a name. Don't go for those kind of fancy names. At least even if it is an engineering college, it makes sense, but there are so many private institutes. They are trying to make money and they are charging a lot of money by giving fancy names. So don't go with the names. So the bottom line is if you have any degree, any bachelor degree, at least four year bachelor degree on in the whole world, anywhere you can work in IT. Right? So that is the first prerequisite. Degree is mandatory because of the competition. Even if you don't do the degree, you can work, but company has to know you are capable of doing something. And the first thing they look for is a degree. Degree is not really mandatory, but for the jobs, it is required. And the second thing is you have to be a quick learner. You cannot say, oh, I have done my Java in 1995, 1998, and I'm not going to upgrade myself, but I want to get the job. That's not going to happen. Every one or two years, every six months, something new comes in the market, you have to learn. If you think that is not your cup of tea, if you don't want to do that, you don't want to upgrade, don't come into IT. Every six months, every one year, something new comes up, you have to be ready to learn and work on it. If you think that is not going to happen, don't even try to get into IT. Second thing. The third thing is, you have to have a mindset of customer satisfaction. Any job in IT, no matter whether it is a programmer, non-programmer, database, or anything, you have to have a mindset of customer satisfaction. If your customer is not happy, you are going to lose the job. It is not the duty of your employer to make customer happy. It is your duty to make your customer happy. So customer satisfaction is really important aspect for every person working in IT. That is the prerequisite. And the next thing by default, logical thinking and problem solving is your primary aspect we are looking for. Any person planning to work in IT, 
they have to have some kind of a logical thinking and problem solving mindset that's why all these big companies coming to colleges and hiring the freshers they take some kind of a test and that test is going to check what is their logical thinking and problem solving thinking the thought process well, one other important <clears throat> prerequisite is whenever you are working on any product you have to feel feel like it is yours otherwise you think that oh i am working for a company company is giving me a salary i don't have to do anything with this product for example i am working on microsoft excel you have to feel this microsoft excel is my product i want to protect it i want to make sure this product is successful i want to make sure this product has no bugs so every aspect you have to feel this product is my product so that kind of a feeling you have to develop in you and another important thing in any of the job openings when you see online every job every it job the primary requirement they are asking is communication skills when you say communication skills you have to know how to write an email right like four or six lines of email you should be able to formulate by yourself what i have to write in that email there is a meeting you have to know okay so communication skills are important you you have to be a best listener so what happens is in your meetings your friends your colleagues your manager your client everyone is talking if you don't listen some important point will be missed and you are going to deliver a product which is substandard it won't be a up to up to the mark standard product so that's why you have to have a perfect listening skills listening in the sense you have to hear what people are saying understand grasp and implement right for example you are giving a demo of a product and your customer says i want one more check box they will say i want this custom check box to be little wider they want to say this font is 10 and increase the font size to 12 if you don't listen next time when you give the demo the client says i told you in the last meeting to change the font size why didn't you change it so you have to have a very good listening skills <clears throat> presentation skills are also required but even if you don't have you can develop over the period of time on day one the presentation skills might not be required for every position but managers it is required some kind of a negotiation skills you have to have for example your client is asking you to create four drop downs in one inch area you have to have a convincing skills negotiation skills you have to tell explain that is not so easy it's not possible even if you make four drop downs in one inch area it is too cram crammed and it won't be readable and the people are not going to use it they cannot use it practically it is not good so you have to have some kind of a convincing and negotiation skills in you in if you are planning to work in it the another important point in any of the advertisements you will see you have to be a team player you have to know how to work in the team you cannot work by yourself you cannot say oh everyone i don't care i am going to work myself no you have to work with your team some team members are going to create problems for you you might be problematic in the team and so you have to change yourself otherwise you have to make sure others are working with you as a team <laughs> multidisciplinary skills is another important requirement here many of the times company says okay i got another requirement and i don't have any other employee to work on it you have to work on it so come you cannot say oh i am a java developer i am not going to work on database i am a database developer i am not going to work on java i am a dba i am not going to work on devops sometimes you have to step into another role and complete that task for example there is no tester and tester left the company and you have to do the testing you cannot so you cannot say i don't do the testing i am not a tester you did not hire me for a tester so you have to be a multidisciplinary person as needed in companies sometimes they ask for people to perform something else and you are not hired for that particular task and last thing is every person working in it have to have some kind of a basics of it the basics of it is what is network 
how the network works, what is the network outage means, what is input output error means. So there are so many terminologies. IP address means what? Port number means what? So these are the basic things everyone working in IT needs to know. Storage system sometimes happens. There is no memory, so it becomes out of memory. So you have to know what is memory means, right? What is server means? What is operating system means? What is multitasking means? What is multi-threading means? So these are the basic things everyone has to know. So the next thing is, what are the different career options? So we have exclusive video on YouTube on this whole session, but I'm just trying to give a bird's eye view on this topic. So there are so many different career options. Those who are planning to come to IT and they are, you are new to IT or within you are already in IT, but you are planning to change your career. You have to decide which career you have to pick. As I said, you are planning to go to some foreign country and you don't know which country you have to go to. So there are so many countries available in the world, right? So you have to explore which career option you have to pick. I have given some examples here like QA automation tester, performance tester, cybersecurity, network monitoring, system administration, DevOps engineer, cloud engineer. These are all, the, all fancy keywords and in every field there are jobs. Many people ask me, I want to come into IT, but what I have to become? Should I go in the cloud? Should I do, do Java? Should I have to do this uh, DevOps? I am hearing from the people, oh, the data science is very good. Artificial intelligence, all the keywords are good, but what you can do? You cannot do everything, right? There are some things which you can do. So you have to decide what, what are all the different things you are good at. No one is going to tell you, you have to make the decision, right? So uh, how do you make the decision? I'm going to talk about that in next uh, slides, but just remember these are the different options available. For example, software development. Software development comes, again, there are sub subgroups within the software development example. Ruby, Perl, PHP, .NET, Java, right? So these are the different languages where you can uh, write a program and solve the problems. So no matter which particular technology you choose, you will become a software developer. I am a software developer in Java and uh, Shoaib is a software developer in .NET. So whole life we are working on one single technology and we are getting our bread and butter. But other things, if you are interested, you might want to learn, but don't learn everything on day one. So you have to pick one thing and become master of that one thing. So these are the just different names I have given here. I'm not going to go into details of them. So initial steps. So what are the initial steps? So from here onwards, I'm giving you the actual presentation for today's uh, topic. You know, my previous prep slides were all about just uh, introduction. So the what are the initial steps if someone is trying to come into IT? The first step people have to do is Explore the different technologies. There are so many technologies available. Don't ask people like me or anyone. No one is going to give you a complete information unless you know who you are. Because I might tell you, go and become a database developer. But you don't like the database. You don't understand the database. It is really hard for you to understand the database. That's how you are um, a human being. Every human being have some kind of a God gift qualities. So everyone is unique, everyone is different and no two people are same. So you have to try something. So for example, database, you have to install the database in your computer. Otherwise, some do some kind of a search on YouTube and see what is database means and what kind of work the database does. Otherwise, programming means what? In UI programming means what? Backend programming means what? Networking means what? So you have to do some kind of uh, exploration. And once you do that exploration, you have to make a decision. Once you make a decision, then come to people like me or Shoaib or anyone from CGC. We are going to guide you how to proceed next. 
So you have to explore the different technologies by either looking on online or YouTube and come, come with some questions. I have picked this particular technology. The reason why I picked is these are the reasons. What do you say? And what are the different career options in that particular technology? Right? Every technology has a job. It's not like, oh, this technology is good. This is bad. All the technologies, all the streams, all the jobs are good. Everywhere there are openings, but you have to start somewhere. And when you start somewhere, you can ask for help. But we are not going to make a decision for you. Understanding the career options, I have told in my previous slide and choose the best fit. So you have to choose the best fit as per your understanding. And while choosing the best fit, you might have confusion. Oh, should I do cloud or database? Database or Java, Java or UI, UI or something else, right? At that time, if you have any questions, we are here to help you. But you have to make a decision. Okay, this thing looks good to me. Otherwise, A and B looks good to me. B and C looks good to me. You have to make some kind of a decision, then come to us. The important point is you have to have some kind of a goal. So for example, I am doing a SQL programming today. In next six months, I want to get a SQL developer job. After five years, I want to become a data scientist. After 10 years, I want to become something else. So you have to have a standard short-term goals and long-term goals. Without the goal, you are just uh, steering in a jungle. So you are just walking in a jungle, walking in a desert versus uh, walking in a road, you will see a difference. If you are walking on a road, you are going to reach some destination, which you have pre previously decided. But if you are walking in a desert or a jungle, there is no destination. You are not going to go anywhere. So you have to have a short-term goal for next three months, six months, and you have to have a long-term goal, like next two years, next five years, what do you want to become, right? Once you make all these decisions, you have to join some kind of a training center if you are interested. Otherwise, you can do join some kind of an online course. There are so many people teaching the courses, teaching the technologies online, but it is your choice. If you want to learn by yourself, you can learn. It's not like, oh, everyone has to join some kind of a course, some kind of an institute. Oh, nothing like that. And once you join some course, otherwise you learn by yourself. One day you feel that, oh, I'm really confident about this technology. For example, you are doing some kind of a UI train, UI exploration. You think that, oh, I'm, I'm good at UI. I can do anything in UI. Okay, then do it. Create a project. For example, I am trying to create a project to manage a hotel, manage a hostel, manage a library, uh, manage some kind of a finances. So you create your own ideas and using those ideas, you create a project. And what you can do is you can upload that project to Git. I'll, I'll talk about that in next uh, slides, but completing a project by yourself is going to create a confidence in you and you can confidently go and give the interviews. And many of the times these projects, what you do as a practice in your home, those projects you can show as your experience and companies are going to honor your experience. And many of the times people come to me and say, oh, I cannot do coding. Coding is really hard. Right? So you can, anyone can do coding. You just have to try and you just have to sit on a computer with a peace of mind and you have to spend some time. So for example, two hours, four hours, you have to sit in front of a computer and solve the problem. That's what the coding is. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I always give one example to people. In my childhood, there used to be a lot of people who don't know how to read the signboard on a bus. People used to come to me and say, uh, this bus goes to which place? Ye bus jati hai? Because they, they cannot read the board. So those are my grandmother's days. My grandmother's and her mother's days, people don't know how to read the signboard on a bus. Then my grandmother's days, people came, oh, they understand some language. So someone knows Urdu, someone knows Telugu, someone knows Parathi. So they know their native language, but they don't know English. 
So people used to ask, okay, I know how to read, but I cannot fill this application form. So, so they have to approach someone for oh, this application form is in English language. I have to make a demand draft for my college application and I don't know how to fill the demand draft uh, form. It, it has like, like two, three things like what is your name? Why are you filling? How much amount? Write that amount in words, but they have to write in English. So the first generation was completely illiterate. Next generation was English illiterate. Then after that, my generation came, there are a lot of people today's world, they don't know how to check email. They don't know what is email, right? So that, that is the third generation. So today's generation is coding generation. People who don't know coding, they are coding illiterate. First generation was completely illiterate. Second generation was English illiterate. Third generation was software or IT illiterate. And next generation is coding illiterate you have to decide you want to become a coding illiterate or you want to become a coding literate. So don't run away from the coding. Coding is not so hard in every technology going forward. There will be some sort of coding involved. If you want to do Tableau, if you want to do uh, UI, you want to do Java or you want to do .NET, you want to do uh, databases, everywhere some level of coding is required going forward. So don't run away from the coding you have to do some kind of a coding going forward, right? If I go to next slide, so you are done with your code uh, training, you joined some institute or you did by yourself at your home, something. So all those things are done, your training is done and you have completed your project and you are confident, I'm good at this subject. So challenge yourself. How you challenge yourself? You are going to write a professional certification exam. For example, you did Java, do the Java certification. You did .NET, .NET certification. You did some kind of a networking. Do the Cisco certification or Microsoft certification, some kind of a certification. You did AWS, do the AWS certification, Azure, Azure certification. So you have to do some kind of a certification to prove you are good at that particular technology because you are saying you are good at technology. How do I believe? I have to give you a job and I'm going to give you a job only if you are master in the technology and you are going to prove you are the master in the technology by writing an exam, passing the exam, getting the certification. And for example, you have write a Cisco certification, you will get a logo and you can put that logo on your visiting card, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, everywhere you can put that logo to say that, see, I am the professional in this particular stream, right? So you have to write some kind of a certification to prove you are the best, right? One other thing you can do is you can create a profile on Git and you can upload your code, your project, and you can give that Git link in your resume saying that, uh, see, I have done this particular course. I have this kind of certification. In this, certifi this particular technology, I have completed this, uh, uh, set, uh, this particular project and my project is uploaded on Git. Go and look at it. Someone asked me, oh, what if someone steals from the Git? So don't worry about it. You are the master. You can create something new. You can create many, many more things. No one is going to steal your work. Even if they steal, they are not going to get anything out of it, right? So build your profile and upload your projects on Git. And that is what called showcase. There are two different keywords in English language, showcase versus show off. Show off means I'm trying to say something, but no, whether, don't, no one knows whether I am right or wrong. Showcase means you are proving. So showcase means you have a professional certificate from a, a big company like Cisco or Oracle or something. And you have a profile on Git. This is called showcase. So you are trying to showcase yourself. The important point is you have to explain who you are. So how you are going to explain people? You create your profile on LinkedIn or Naukri or Master or any other website, job websites. And you have to provide all the required keywords. Many people ask me, what are the required keywords? So for example, someone is trying to become a Java developer. 
what you have to do is you have decided you want to become a java developer you will go to a, any jobs website for example linkedin.com and say java developer you will get a lot of job openings and each job and job opening there are some bullet points so for example uh, there is a java developer opening in uh, amazon in hyderabad or amazon in seattle us they will say this particular person must have some kind of understanding of jenkins some kind of understanding of maven some kind of understanding of uh, uh, spring hibernate so there are so many bullet points make sure those bullet points are available in your profile when you are creating a profile on linkedin or nokri or master or any job website if those things you don't know over the period of time you have to learn you cannot say i learned some basics and i'm going to be done with it every week every month try to learn something new and add it to your profile on your jobs website that's how people are going to find you you are the most useful person in the whole world and they are the one looking for you so once you create your profile online you can you have to create a resume and in that resume you have to specify the technologies you don't write in that resume i like to play basketball i like to play cricket i was the captain in a cricket team in my college uh, i love uh, watching movies singing songs because those things are irrelevant no one cares if you need a job in it specify what are the different technologies you are good at what kind of professional certifications you did what kind of projects you did so those th those things are important and everyone says i have very good communication skills everyone writes in a resume i have very good communication skills you don't have to write in a resume when they call you for an interview they will find out whether you have communication skills or not people are not going to choose your resume whether you have written a communication skills bullet point or not even if you write communication skills bullet point they are not going to choose your resume if required and relevant technologies are not available in your resume so you are done with your resume you done with your profile done with your project so the next final step is to find out the job so for many of the people on many of these our whatsapp chats people say oh this company is giving me only 10000 rupees only 500 dollars only 300 dirhams i am not going to work for that company in the beginning you don't know anything you don't have any experience you don't have any practical experience even if someone is offering you a work for free go ahead and work so internship is important if you get a very good job with high salary yes definitely good but if you don't just sitting at home doing nothing you will become like stagnant water and some mosquitoes will come and uh, start laying eggs on that uh, stagnant water so don't become a stagnant water you have to just keep moving from point a to point b to point c to point d so that's called improvement that's called upgrade so whenever you find any job even if they are not giving you enough salary or no salary join that job junior positions are okay if they are giving you a junior position that is fine unless you have lot of experience if you have lot of experience don't go for junior position and freelance there are some things which you can do from home for example you create a logo or you create a website you can maintain a website there are many many things which people can do just by sitting at home working as a freelance uh, developer or freelance professional right <clears throat> the best example for, for freelance is creating a logo creating images creating websites these these things people can easily do as a freelance and there are some people who are doing freelance for life long but in the beginning you can do freelancing then you can slowly join a job it is up to you which thing you prefer finally one important point those who complete all my previous steps like project training everything certification come back to cgc and cgc is going to refer you cgc has lot of volunteers and each volunteer is working in a big company in a big position some people are managers recruiters so they might give you a referral and you can easily get a job so keep in touch with cgc join cgc groups and uh, people are 
very liberal, very helpful at CGC, and they are going to give you a referral if needed. And those who are into Java, they can connect with me. Someone is trying to do automation, they can connect with me. Uh, that is another option. <clears throat> when you are applying for a job, don't just attach your resume and throw it out. Oh, I have to apply this job. I know this is not going to work. I know this is just going away. So you become like a careless person because you have applied for four jobs and you did not get it. Some people have applied for 1000 jobs. Then they got the perfect job. So don't try to hesitate, but in every email, make some description. I am applying for this particular job. I found your job advertisement on so-and-so website, so-and-so newspaper, so-and-so day. There was some kind of a reference number. Try to write descriptive email, three to four lines, if not like 10, 15 lines, at least three to four lines. You write something and send it and say that, oh, I, I learned about your company. Your company is doing good. Your company has very good future. You are making very good products. Something you have to write in the resume at this email and send the resume. Don't just send a resume without any description. In olden days, we used to call it as a cover letter, but these days, these emails are serving as a cover letter. And uh, no matter what happens, keep giving the interviews. If you get an opportunity for an interview, prepare well. Make sure this interview, I want to get the job, right? Once you're done with your interview, you have to come back and do some kind of a practice. Okay, I'll talk about that in next slide. Uh, when you are creating a profile, don't just create a profile. Okay, five years ago, I created a profile and the profile is going to stay as is. No, you have to upgrade your profile. Every three months, every six months, go back and check. Oh, I learned four different technologies and they are not there in my resume. They are not there on my LinkedIn. They are not there on my Naukari profile. So keep going to these profiles and resumes and upgrade yourself and add more uh, content to these profiles, right? So I was talking about the interviews, so give mock interviews. So first thing you do is talk to someone at CGC and say, I want to test myself. I have learned this technology. I did my project. I did my certification. I did everything. I'm confident, but I just want to see when I am sitting in the interview, how I am performing, what is my performance index, whether I am the top performer, medium performer, worst performer, because even if you know a lot of things, you might not be able to spell them out during the interview. So the people who are really experienced in your field, they might be able to gauge your mistakes. They might be able to give you suggestions. They might be tell, able to tell how to articulate your thoughts because you might have learned very good thing, but you don't know how to articulate, how to explain, how to present them. So that's what happens if you do some kind of a mock interviews from seniors, and those seniors are going to give you some kind of a suggestions. Those suggestions will be useful, right? And whenever you get a chance for an interview, prepare as if that is your last chance. Think that after this, I'm not going to get any, get any interview opportunity. Prepare well, because who knows, your preparation is going to pay off on that day. If not, your preparation is not going to go waste. Next interview, you are going to use the same preparation and do one more better interview than previous interview. But whenever you get an interview, think that this is the last opportunity and I have to do it. You do your best. Once you're done with your interview, come home and note down. What are all the things did they ask? What are all the answers did you give? Right. Uh, many of the times what happens is when you go for an interview, the interview people, they ask you, the interviewer is going to ask you how much salary you want. Uh, don't simply say whatever you give is fine. Before you go for an interview, you have to understand if I am planning to work as a Java developer, I am the fresher, I don't have any experience, how much is the salary in the market? If I want to become a database expert or something, what is the salary in the market? So you have to have some kind of a number in your mind. And also the salary depends on the city. If it is Mumbai, the salary is different. 
if it is gurgaon the soft salary is different if it is hyderabad the salary may be different if it is in dubai it may be saudi it may be new york salary is different from city to city state to state country to country so you have to have some kind of a salary in your mind and you have to negotiate as per the market don't try to go too high don't try to go too low and you have to have some kind of a number in your mind and from there you have to do some kind of a negotiation of a salary if you are a fresher you can work for low salary less salary and over the period of time you can change the company change the job and get better salary <laughs> and if you are really experienced person you have a negotiating upper hand in your side then you can talk about the benefit also some companies are going to give you a sign in bonus medical insurance stocks moving in investment lot of things companies are going to give only if you have that kind of upper hand you can go and negotiate those things right so i'm trying to stop here show if you can stop the recording uh there was okay. one question okay. on the there was one question on the chat what is aws so i'll go back